So I was teaching you about the atonement and um, the word for, and I was comparing it to like being able to be able to be washed clean. And so the word for soap in Spanish is jabón and the word for ham in Spanish is jamón. And this was very, very early into my mission and so I just had not nailed that difference yet. And so I I told my investigators that because of the atonement, they could be washed with ham and feel clean. <laughs> and that was one of my better moments. <laughs> There's another funny one too. So that's at the beginning of my mission. Proof that you never really perfect the language. My third to last week, I'm teaching... Um, I'm holding ward choir practice because the music programs there are not great. They don't sing very on key, but they really wanted to try. So my bishop asked me if I'd um, start a ward choir. So I'm trying to get them all to breathe at the same spot. And so I'm saying, todos aspiren, aspiren a key, which um, I thought was everyone breathe here. And after a minute of really trying to get them to breathe in the same spot, this hermana raises her hand and she's like, hermana Toronto, do you mean respirar? And I just stop, I'm like, oh my goodness, I've been telling them all to vacuum. I've been telling them all to vacuum together. <laughs> like, in some parts of the world, Aspirar works for breathe, not where I was. <laughs> and so I was like, oh yeah, guys, we're all gonna clean the church now. And like, they all, <laughs> they all like, got a good laugh about it. And they all, like pretended to vacuum whenever we got to that spot. And I was like, okay, great. <laughs> I've been a missionary for 17 months now and haven't nailed the language and that's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a funny one too. <laughs> Tongue tacos. <laughs> we were going home for the night and there was a lady crying by our our car and asked to use our phone and I asked her who she needed to call and she was like 911. I was like, oh, this is sketchy. And it was a sketchy part of the neighborhood anyways. And so I told her I'd call her nine I'd call nine one one for her. She could tell us what was going on. So she tells us that the creepy man that's twenty feet away from us is trying to hurt her and it was really scary and he ran up towards us and tried to take her and for some reason didn't and then the police came right as crazy people came in a van and <laughs> it just I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but it was really crazy. And then a private investigator called me the next day, and it was the first day of me training Sister Pratt. And I get off the phone, and she's like, who's that? And I was just like, no one. <laughs> like, not going to tell the girl I'm training that a private investigator is calling me because we almost got kidnapped last night. Not going to happen. <laughs> so that's probably the craziest thing that happened. I spent seven months teaching this old couple, their names are Elena and Santiago, and we spent months and months and months of teaching them, and um, Elena always was like, hermanas, I'm not getting baptized, I'll keep every other commitment, and she kept every other commitment with precision, including coming to church every Sunday. But she had already been baptized by immersion and actually confirmed by the laying on of hands, not by someone who held the priesthood, but in, in a church there that has very similar doctrine. And so she just, she didn't understand the concept of priesthood. And um, one night we were eating dinner with her and this was probably six months into our relationship with her. And she turns to us and she was like, Hermano Teran, who is the ward mission leader, told me on Sunday that I was wasting your girl's time. What do you think? And I was like, well, Elena, I don't think you're wasting our time. But he said that because he's really concerned that you know all the truth and, and you haven't decided to act on it. And she just looks at me. She was like, oh, I'll be baptized. <laughs> and my companion and I were like, wait, what? <laughs> We've literally asked you probably 30 times if you'll be baptized. And it's always been no. And you just said that you would. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be baptized. And I was like, so on Sunday, will you be baptized? And she was like, yeah, Sunday, 5 o'clock. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> like, whatever just happened, it happened. And, um... Oh, the baptismal interviews were hilarious. The, the baptismal service was really great. But as 
as she descended into the water, I was filled with such an immense amount of love and um, so much joy, more joy than I've ever felt ever, just seeing her be baptized and knowing how good of a person she was and knowing where her heart was and um, knowing that she was going to be someone that I'd be with in the celestial kingdom. It was, it was a beautiful experience and my companion and I sobbed throughout the whole thing <laughs> because we were so happy. And then the next day when they were, con or the next Sunday when they were confirmed, they were both promised that they'd have the blessings of the temple and an eternal marriage, which was beautiful because both of them had so many health problems and other things going on that it was just, it was such an amazing moment knowing that, that we had done what we were supposed to do and that was going to be fruit that lasted. And, um, and so it was a deeply spiritually rewarding experience for me. The biggest thing that has changed between who I was before the mission and on the mission and now almost a year after the mission is my knowledge in knowing that the atonement really does heal, that it really does give us the power to break the ties that we couldn't before. And um, my love for the Savior and for our Heavenly Parents who sent us, or to, who sent us and who sent Him has just increased a lot. Okay, so the best skill I learned on my mission was an ability to enjoy the little moments because on the mission you're just always going, you're always doing, there's always something else to be doing and so I learned that, I mean yes there were always things to be doing and yes I was always going but I could stop and laugh with my companion, I could take a picture of a flower, I could, I could enjoy a, whatever it is um, and that this world is is one of joy and that God really does want us to be happy and find happiness in the work and just that our work doesn't have to be perfect <laughs> we can really try our best and and whatever that is that is certainly more than enough to our Heavenly Father well, there's a drought in Southern California right now so it literally was sunny every day of my mission besides 10 minutes it rained one day and then all of Southern California fasted for rain, and then it rained 10 minutes that night. So weather, not really an issue, not my struggle, <laughs> not what I was called to bear. Um, but there were several earthquakes, so the summer right before I left, there was maybe eight or 10 earthquakes in, in the course of a few weeks. 